Hi, hello, this is Vivek. I hope you are doing good. In CBSE curriculum in grade 10, today we will be discussing a new chapter in geography, which is chapter number one, resources and development. For the development of human being, first, you need to have a requirement, you need to have a problem, you need to have a situation where you think of a particular entity which might be having the potential to solve your problem. And that in generally is always called or considered as a resource. Like if you say or like if you consider a scenario where you are not able to understand a particular concept, you definitely do consider about a teacher or a person who can explain the things. So the teacher is becoming your resource. In the same way, if you are feeling thirsty, you need water to fulfill that thirstiness and hence water becomes your resource. In order to live, we need oxygen. And where are we getting that oxygen from? We are getting it from air. We are getting it from atmosphere. And hence, the air or the atmosphere becomes the resource for us. In the same way, it might be any device, it might be any entity, it might be any material or any substance on this planet Earth. If it is able to fulfill the requirement or satisfy the need of a human being, it will be called or considered as a resource. Then comes the question, why do we need a resource in the first place? Because human being is an aspirational living being. Human being never settles. If you give him a two-wheeler, he will think about the three-wheeler. If you give him the three-wheeler, he will think about the four-wheeler. If you give him the four-wheeler, he will be thinking about a bigger four-wheeler like a bus or a truck. And then he thinks about the train. Then he will think about going in air, which is nothing but the aeroplane. And in the same way, he didn't stop there. He started moving into space as well. And that's how human beings always live their lives. They keep moving. They keep thinking about new, new possibilities. They keep creating new problems for themselves. And they find a solution for those problems. And they try to live a happy life. In the due process itself, they develop the entities. They develop the living circumstances. They develop the conditions as well. So hence, we can clearly say that resource are to be there, resources are mandatory to have a happy life, but not only just for a happy life, for development as well. Again, why? Because if there is no development, human beings won't be able to lead a happy life. So in any which way, the main ultimate goal is to lead a happy and healthy life for which development has to be taken place. And for development, you need few things to fulfill that, which are called as resource. And hence, in this particular chapter, we'll be talking about the resources, what are the different types of resource, or which entity can be considered or called as a resource, depending upon the factors, we'll talk about that. And we'll also focus upon the development as well. But before going into the chapter, let's try to look at this particular picture. There are some windmills, there are a few solar panels, and here you can see there is a car service showroom. And here you can see there are three different types of dustbins. One is in green, one is in red, and one is in blue color. Where the green one talks about the recyclable waste, where the red one talks about the radioactive waste, and the blue one talks about the non-degradable waste. And here you can see some people are maintaining a healthy lifestyle. They are using cycle as a resource for the means of transport. And here you can see a person is watering the plants, and cars are obviously running on electricity. If you look at these windmills and solar panels in particular, or if you consider the reality, at one point of time, there were no windmills on this planet Earth. There were no solar panels on this planet Earth. But people started thinking about energy. People started thinking about the demand of energy. People started thinking about the energy crisis that might come in the future or sometime later. And that's when they thought of a new solution, which is wind energy, for which they have built windmills. They have made or manufactured the solar panels, which try to capture the sunlight, which try to capture the solar heat. And by that means, it is able to produce electricity. In that way, we slowly have shifted by not depending on coal or fossil fuels to green fuels like solar and wind energy. Again, they become a resource because they are fulfilling the need, they are satisfying the need, they are satisfying the requirement, but they are also leading to development as well. Because if we have energy, we can use it to fulfill something else. We can use it to do some other activity. And that's how resources and development are always interrelated. Now let's get into the details. Everything available in our environment, which can be used to satisfy our needs, provided it is technologically accessible, 
economically feasible and culturally acceptable then can be called or termed or considered as a resource. So it is not only just the point of whether it is able to satisfy our needs which means you are feeling hungry obviously you need to eat something but if you are not available to get that then obviously your need won't be satisfied or else if you are feeling thirsty and you are standing in a desert we know that there are no water bodies in a desert apart from an oasis which means you need to find for an oasis and if you are not able to find it then there won't be any water which might be a big problem for you and hence when we say a resource it can be anything which is available in the environment the first thing that it has to cater is it should be able to satisfy the need but it's not just the only point that has to be considered. Why? Because that particular resource has to be technologically accessible. Like if you talk about solar energy and wind energy, just a while ago we have discussed that. At one point of time, there were no solar panels and wind energy, even though there was wind, even though there was sun, it was not technologically accessible. But now, because of the technological developments that had took place, people are able to establish solar panels. Like here you can see there are solar panels which are absorbing the sunlight, which are absorbing the solar energy and converting it into electrical energy, which means solar energy is technologically accessible and it is economically feasible as well. Once upon a time it was very costly, but now it is feasible and hence people are now putting solar panels on top of their roofs or top of their houses as well, which means it's economically feasible. And the third one is culturally acceptable, which means it shouldn't be disturbing any beliefs of the people. And if that's done, then that would be considered as a resource. So resource can be anything. It need not to be mandatory. It has to be in a physical form. When we say resource, it's not mandatory that it has to be in a solid form or liquid form or gases form or it has to be coming from somewhere else. It can be anything. Human being himself can be a resource. Air can be a resource. Water can be a resource. Paper can be a resource. Tree is a resource. In that way, everything in our environment can be a resource provided that it is technologically accessible which means one should be able to manufacture it somehow by the help of technology. Second, it should be economically feasible which means people should be able to access it. People should be able to use it in a such a way where they won't be feeling any issue with it. Like imagine using solar energy in 1920s. Maybe solar energy idea was there in 1920s but technologically it was quite difficult to access. And second thing is it was not economically feasible at that point of time. But now it's feasible. Talk about the electric vehicles. Today we have e-bikes, e-cars, e-buses as well. Once upon a time that was not feasible. Today we have technology to build an e-car, to build an e-bike, to build an e-bus. And we, it is also economically feasible and hence people are buying it. In the same way people don't have any cultural problems regarding buying an e-bike or an e-car. So people started using it and hence it became a resource. That's how. Provided all those scenarios are favorable, that's when a thing or an entity can be termed or called as a resource. The process of transformation of things available in our environment involves an interactive relationship between nature, technology and institutions. Now this is the most important part especially when we talk about a resource. Just a while ago we got to know the definition of a resource. Resource can be anything which is available in the environment provided that it has to be technologically accessible, economically feasible and culturally acceptable. That would be called as a resource. But when we talk about the transformation of things, which means the changing of things in the environment, there are a lot of things that we need to take care of. It is an interactive relationship between the nature and technology and institutions. Now what do you mean by this? Let's say for example, making bread. In order to make bread, first you need wheat which means if there is no wheat, you won't be able to make bread. And for making bread, you need to have at least a bread factory or people who should be working there or who will be working there. If there are no people to work in a bread factory, then there won't be bread at all in the first place. And that's not the only scenario. In order to make the bread, you also need wheat as well. So that's the thing. It is an interactive relationship. As remember, resources and development are nothing but two interrelated entities. So it is an interactive relationship where nature is being accessed by the technology and the technology is being used by the institutions and that's how things are happening. Like here in this picture you can see this would be a better understanding for you. There are human beings who are able to use the technology. They are able to access the nature. They are using the technology to access the nature 
and at the same time they are also using institutions to ensure that this technology is in the hands of institutions they are regulated by these institutions and this technology is being used by the institutions to access the nature and ultimately fulfilling the needs of the human beings that's how we say it is an interactive relationship human beings interact with nature through technology and create institutions to accelerate their economic development like if you talk about fertilizers for an example take a car a car is not naturally available it is a man made entity it's a man made product so what are people doing people are taking rubber from trees and they are making tires using the technology and in the same way they are able to mine iron they are able to make the body of the car they are mining lithium they are using it in electronic devices using the technology and that's how they are making a car and a car company or a car factory is nothing but an institution in that way they are using the technology to access the resources to access the nature and able to generate or rather to able to make an institution Thank you.